Welcome to today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. Today, we're going to explore in more detail the historical past of Tucson and how it led to being such a culturally rich destination. As we have learned in earlier podcasts, the Spanish Empire, at its zenith during the 16th and 17th centuries, was one of the most powerful empires in the world. Its vast territorial holdings extended across the Americas, including present-day Mexico and parts of what would become the United States. However, over time, a combination of factors led to the gradual loss of control over these territories. So let's take a look at the decline of Spanish dominance in Mexico and the United States. The Spanish arrived in the Americas in 1492 when Christopher Columbus made his first voyage to the Caribbean. This marked the beginning of Spanish colonization in the New World. By the early 16th century, Spanish conquistadors like Hernán Cortés and Francisco Pizarro had embarked on ambitious expeditions to conquer vast territories, with Cortés famously leading the conquest of the Aztec Empire in Mexico in 1519 to 1521. One of the foremost challenges the Spanish encountered in Mexico was native resistance. The indigenous populations were not passive victims and they often fiercely resisted Spanish rule. The Mixton War in the 1540s, led by indigenous groups in western Mexico, and the Pueblo Revolt of 1680 in present-day New Mexico were significant uprisings against Spanish rule. These revolts demonstrated that maintaining control over vast territories with relatively small Spanish populations was a daunting task. Another factor contributing to Spain's loss of control was the sheer size of the territories. Spanish settlers were concentrated in urban centers and mining regions, while vast stretches of land remained beyond their control. The Spanish crown struggled to exert its authority over these remote areas and making them vulnerable to encroachments by other European powers and indigenous groups. During the Age of Exploration, other European powers particularly England and France, were also eager to establish their presence in the Americas. The Spanish Empire faced competition from these rivals, who established colonies in North America, encroaching on Spanish-held territories. In 1763, as a result of the Seven Years' War, Spain ceded Florida to Britain, further eroding its territorial control in North America. Economic factors also played a pivotal role in the decline of Spanish dominance. The Spanish Empire extracted vast amounts of wealth from its American colonies, primarily through the mining of precious metals like silver and gold. However, this wealth was not evenly distributed, and Spain's economy became heavily reliant on American resources. As the flow of precious metals declined, the Spanish crown faced financial difficulties, which hindered its ability to maintain control over its vast territories. Perhaps the most critical turning point in the loss of Spanish control over Mexico was the Mexican War of Independence, which began in 1810 and lasted for over a decade. Led by figures like Miguel Hidalgo and José María Morelos, the Mexicans fought for their independence from Spanish rule. The war was marked by fierce battles and shifting allegiances. Mexico eventually gained its independence from Spain in 1821 and, as a result, 
Tucson became part of the newly formed Mexican state of Sonora. During this time, Tucson served as a vital trade and transportation hub on the route between Sonora and California. It was a Mexican frontier town and Mexican ranching traditions and culture influenced the region. In the case of the United States, Spanish territories in the Southwest, including California, New Mexico, and Texas, gradually fell under American influence. The Louisiana Purchase in 1803 expanded the United States territory, and settlers pushed westward, encroaching on Spanish-held lands. The decline of Spanish dominance in Mexico and the United States can be attributed to a combination of factors, including indigenous resistance, geographic challenges, competition with other European powers, economic difficulties, and internal conflicts. While the Spanish Empire once held sway over vast territories in the Americas, these factors gradually eroded its control, ultimately leading to the emergence of independent nations and the expansion of the United States in North America. The legacies of this historical process continue to shape the cultural, political, and social landscapes of these regions today. Now we understand the background between Spain, Mexico, and the United States, but there are more developments to understand for this region. In 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the Mexican-American War, ceding a large portion of Mexico's territory to the United States. This included the Tucson area, which became part of the Arizona Territory, an area newly acquired by the United States. This marked the end of the Mexican ownership and governance of Tucson. The acquisition of Arizona and the surrounding region by the United States was motivated by a combination of factors, including territorial expansion, economic interests, such as access to valuable resources and transportation routes, and the belief in the concept of manifest destiny, which held that it was the destiny of the United States to expand across the continent. As you can imagine, the acquisition of these territories had significant implications for the indigenous populations and Mexican residents who lived in the region, as it led to changes in governance, land ownership, and cultural dynamics. Despite the change in sovereignty, Mexican culture and traditions continued to play a significant role in Tucson's identity. Many Mexican families who had lived in the area for generations remained, contributing to the cultural and social fabric of the region. Elements of Mexican architecture, food, and language have left a lasting impact on Tucson. Today, Tucson has a strong Mexican-American community that has contributed to the region's cultural diversity. Mexican cuisine is a prominent part of Tucson's culinary scene and cultural events such as Dia de los Muertos and Cinco de Mayo are celebrated with enthusiasm. As a result of this fascinating historical background, Tucson, Arizona is a vibrant and culturally rich city. Let's take a look at two of the most iconic buildings in the Tucson area and how they reflect the storied past of this region. First, we're going to explore the Mission San Xavier del Bac, which is a National Historic Landmark. It is also the only remaining mission in the state of Arizona. The mission was founded in 1692 by Father Eusebio Quino, a Spanish missionary who traveled throughout the northern part of New Spain which now comprises the northern part of Mexico and the southwestern portion of the United States. The current structure was begun at the site in 1783 by a Franciscan father and is regarded as the finest example of Mexican Baroque architecture in the United States. The flags of four different nations have flown over the mission. It fell under the jurisdiction of Spain 
until Mexico won its independence in 1821. The Gadsden Purchase brought the mission into the United States in 1854. And today, following the creation of the Tahana Atham Nation in 1937, the flag of the nation flies over the mission. We have some photographs of the mission on our website if you'd like to see them. Another wonderful building in the Tucson area is the Pima County Courthouse, designed by Rory Place. This Spanish colonial revival-styled structure was built in 1929 and served as a courthouse and county government office for 86 years. It closed in 2015 for renovation and then reopened in 2019 housing the Southern Arizona Heritage and Visitor Center. The building has a beautiful blue dome and is one of the most notable Spanish colonial revival buildings in Arizona. That's all we have for today. If you enjoyed our podcast, please follow us wherever you get your podcasts. In our next episode, we will be looking at many of the fun and wonderful things to see and do in Tucson. We think you will really enjoy what we have to share. So join us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world.